This video is going to be uh, Red Queen from Devil May Cry 4. It doesn't have that squiggly line, squiggly line was just for matching it up. Uh, the things that make this one interesting is it's got a nice shape. It's got some detail around here. Um, the In the game, there was this thing where I, I remembered it vaguely from playing it ages ago that it was uh, somehow a motorbike, somehow. And that this thing, this handle down here, uh, if you squeeze it, it made engine noises and stuff. And I looked up a video and he rides around monsters. Like if he, if he's like, is like the death blow he can do to a monster is sticking it in. And then he rides the monster around almost like it's a magic carpet. And um, so I don't feel so bad about not doing the engine and not putting in some like tacky sound effect type thing. Because truly, the only way this actually worked as a motorbike thing was straight up magic. So, I can't do that yet, so I'm just going to do the steel parts. We have to be well behaved, kids. Okay. Be well behaved. Hey, how's it going? Uh, Good, sorry, it's awesome. terrible, but I thought it'd like, oh, be good to so film. This is the first time, first dog. So you know? fluffy! My, my bag of um, cleanup stuff, some awesome. gloves and, yep, and a paper towels. Okay. Because you know she's going to poop as soon as you get on the ferry. Of course. Oh, this is so awesome. I have all the love in the world. <laughs> Kids, do you love Maddie? Yeah! <laughs> Oh man, so this is the big ass plate. I'll be making the sword out of the blade. Um, I left it in the vinegar overnight. I had sheets over it. Uh, not sheets, uh, yeah, it is a sheet, a plexiglass sheet to try and keep some of the heat in, amplify the sun's rays, but it's just so cold. You can see that it hasn't done much of anything, but did it at least. Yeah, so overnight the vinegar has got it so that it's coming off like this. Now to cut this guy out, something unusual is going to happen here. Uh, I think I'm going to go straight back and then do all of this shape. That's it done more or less. The next step is to straighten this blank. The reason I'm doing this slab after cutting out as opposed to before is this one is a very odd shape and I find the ones with the weird shapes like the, the non-consistent strains ins and outs is like I could have straightened the slab 
And then that would have created tension points in the middle, probably, where I had I bent it to the right shape. And then it might have done strange things because the middle of this guy is much thinner than, I mean, it's strange, yeah. So you have this big bit at the back and then there's a wide bit followed by a narrow bit at the top. So it might have been fine. It's just, it's got more ins and outs than like a buster sword or whatever, you know? Like I was looking at the crazy off cut from this guy. Uh, I noticed this comment uh, in the underneath the videos a lot about the off cuts. Oh, that off cut looks cool, but I rarely think that myself. Except for this guy. But that would make a quite respectable. I don't know. Can you see? <laughs> that would make a respectable giant sword type thing. Two hundred twenty-five. Hang on. What was it? Two hundred twenty-five minus three. So it only took twenty. Uh, three millimeters of deflection to get this guy straight. It's hard to see this. There we go. Slightly different for every blank. Every blank is a different thickness, so it takes a little, a different amount of pressure on every one. So this is not a thing I can ever get good at. It's always a trial and error thing. It's getting slightly too dark to be doing this, but I hate doing it under artificial light. It's probably making it worse. This dust, the, the sandpaper stuff, I went up and rubbed my eye at some stage. I started bugging me. Not a great idea to touch your eye while doing all this uh, sanding stuff. <laughs> Grinding for 40 minutes. Three gloves, one inside the other. Oh, my fingers still went numb. So I pulled all my gloves off so I could put my hands on the plate to warm them up, my fingertips. The plate was cold. After 40 minutes of grinding, the plate was still cold to the touch. <laughs> That's one side done. Whew. Yep. Num, 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 num. So what we're doing here is, as per the template, Alistair has this, or not Alistair, what's it? Red Queen has this big um, groove going all the way down it. Um, I looked into briefly into having it machined, but because it's curved, it's an, a pain in the arse. And because this is quarter inch plate, even if it was only like a sixteenth of an inch, um, that would only leave it a, like an eighth thick, like all the way up the middle. And um, you know, you might be able to get away with it on a thicker sword, but then no one would be able to lift a thicker sword. So uh, I decided to burn it in because I could do that here. Although it's proving to, to be taking ages because this little sponge, I'm doing it in little patches and each patch I'm given 15 minutes. So as you can imagine, I've been here for hours and I still have, uh, if I'm lucky, half hour to go, but probably more. Um, but that's the idea. Hopefully at least with the when it's cleaned up and gun blued, if nothing else, even if it's not very deep, the texture difference, because this is smooth and this will be very rough, will be enough for it to register visually, um, I said, hopefully. Oh 
I gun blued the groove and sanded back to increase the contrast. I was talking to my buddy. See the light? Is that thing real? Is this real? No. It's a finger mark. I oiled it as well. You're supposed to oil that gun blue stuff. Um, I didn't oil this part because this is where all the welding happens, but the blade is more or less done. Um, but I was talking to my buddy about how it took so long to do the etch. And they said, why didn't you just get a really long, skinny sponge? And um, that's that's not as silly as it might sound. Like, I built the plasticine trough all around the edge. Why couldn't I have filled it with salt and then had a, maybe a like five or four contact points and then just leave it burn for three hours instead of 15 minutes, or three and a half hours instead of 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes. And the reason was, I mean, I might be wrong, right? But And it might have turned out fine. But if I just set up the whole thing burning and let it go, weird stuff might have happened. Like, it might have burnt in deeper in the middle than it did at the ends, which on such a shallow etch can make, and such a long etch, could actually be like a crazy difference, you know? Like, so this would be all bluff and wide and coming out over the edge and these parts would be like really shallow. So that's why I didn't want to risk it, I thought. And also it might overlo have overloaded the machine uh, to have the power source going for three and a half hours solid instead of having a break every 15 minutes while I reset everything. Oh, my battery says it's about to die. But I think I, I think I got him what I wanted to say. Is that right? One, two, yeah. These are the extracted pieces I wanted to use. These are the two wonky replacements I found just lying around. It's very miserly keeping the old discs, but there's some like, you know, there'll be some awful job that somebody will want me to do like sanding the paint off of some piece of old machinery or something and instead of wasting a new disc I'll burn out one of these old ones there we go One of the reasons to start off with new straight, you know, straight clean metal is if I only had one of these uh, wibbly wobbly guys to make, I uh, these curly cues. Uh, starting off with a crooked piece of metal is the same, but since I have two and I want to match them up, every step of the process, I'm going to be uh, doubling it up and doing it twice. And if you have to do that with two wibbly wobbly pieces of metal, it's just it's just harder. So having two newish straight pieces. Makes it easier to duplicate things. I had to use heat on these guys because these were slightly too tight to bend by hand. I am in the wrong position because I have put the camera into the position that can see clearly. I'm just I have to cut these guys at an angle.
Man, welding those li little thorns on was really annoying. Uh, but there we go. I think it was it was the clamping of them and positioning of them. This was a bit off an old um, broken MIG tip, but I could clamp that to the table to shove the little point in, and kind of, and then then butt this up against there, and that was kind of how I did it. You know, the back of the MIG tip has that tapered little piece. Uh, for the wire to slide into, so like the tops of these guys uh, go in, and not on that one because I've shaved the back. See, I've shaved the back of this guy flat, but um, like that, and that's kind of how I line them up for. Whew! A lot of little fiddly stuff. I sometimes think that the uh, I've spent all day doing this. That like the the only gift I have that's like different to a normal person doing this type of work is the time I have to do it. Like if it wasn't for the YouTube and the Patreon, a lot of these things would just take too long and not be worth my time messing around with. So yeah, it's 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 all ye enablers. That's the that's my main gift is my army of enablers is what makes me different to a standard welder fabricator. Decided to clean these guys up before I uh, trim them more. I was just worried about the the precision of the lines I was drawing. The, those ultra fine tip sharpies I use. I know some people are like, oh, you could use the spray paint technique. You know, put your template down and spray paint it if you want to see what lines you're cutting out. I've I've always found that that it has a messy edge. Like, it has a blurry, woolly edge. Even on videos where I've seen other guys do it, um, I have... I don't think it's a good enough edge. So... But I needed the metal clean so I could draw uh, the Sharpie mark. So, did I already do this side? It looks like I already did this side. And just forgot, because I was filming. So this is a tendency to sprung in, so that's what that little bar there is doing. But this is just to see, is there any chance at all that, where's the gun? There it is. There we go. That guy could bend down a little bit, but it fits inside it at least. My previous sander, probably because I'd overused it, uh, like I'm going to overuse this one. Uh, the roller on the back was practically melted. There was a bunch of the rubber stuff just dragged everywhere. Um, but I bought this new Makita one because of um, me overusing things. But the profile on it is like more or less flat, which is great. Like I, I turned it so that it wasn't, that the, the belt was up here. And I could clamp it sideways and put a block here and use it as a like a 
push. I don't know what you call that style of um, sander. But yeah, neat. Michael Cthulhu, misusing everything since 2007. So that's one of them done. These complicated bevels ground. Uh, they're not complicated, I guess. It's just um, all of these, when I have to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those, one edge meeting another edge type things gets finicky. This room was the only one that was really difficult. I had to get out the, the files and the sandpaper. That one could do with a little, little more pushing, pushing this edge that way. That's the idea. That kind of slope bevel. So these guys are sanded to be more or less the same. I haven't done the ends yet because the ends are where it's tacked. Um, so I want to drill this hole. There's like a big stud. I might use that as a um, nut and bolt or just just a just a some sort of fixture for holding this guy this plate onto the surface of the sword um, and get a weld in under here towards the surface and then a couple of welds on the back for now I'm gonna drill these two while they're or drill this drill the two plates while they're still joined to each other to ensure that the hole is in the exact same place on both plates One clamp. One, two, three. Four. That's that locked into place kind of. The thorns are welded on here, here, and here. Uh, the real weld, the welds holding the frame on. You can see on the back that ho those holes going around the perimeter. Yow! That's these guys welded up. Now I'm going to trim the edges to match. I had a paper template. Where is it gone? Here, guys. See here? To trace out the, the shape on the inside that the frame makes. And these guys, it turns out, are a little bigger than that in places. So I'm going to trim that back. Um, I think it's pretty fine. But it was more important to have that inside space be big enough for the this guy. Whew. So that's the edges cleaned up on the surface obviously um, you can see some weld marks in behind this guy but uh, this this inner surface gets painted red uh, hopefully I'll be able to do that I was thinking was there some way to paint it before putting this guy in there but not not really I'd prefer to do all the welding get all the welding out of the way before going anywhere near this with paint so that's these guys done for the moment. They stayed relatively flat. They only have the slightest warp in them, which I think will clamp down and will clamp down from both sides. Hopefully that'll even out.
So that bent over like that. There's four vents on the back of the sword that are supposed to be like the exhaust for the engine. Um, so that's what these guys are going to be. Have to bend them over like that one. So that's the that's the idea. There they are, put on the sword loosely. Gonna have to do some adjustments. I'm pretty sure this one has to come down lower, so that will mean either taking a notch out of the sword or a notch out of the piece. We'll probably notch out the piece. These are not the correct positions, but that's the idea of how they go on the back of the sword. Sure was hard balancing this guy on the drill this way. <coughs> I'm gonna drill this hole so I have a way to locate both of these guys so that they're, um, uh, whatchamacallit, exactly opposite each other, or at least this hole will be locked exactly opposite each other, and then I can swivel them till they look right. If this thing will drill, I got it through, but it fought me. Is that a, a, like a, a swelling at the edge? Some, you know, like the, with a blunt drill bit, how it almost pushes through the metal instead of cutting cleanly. So I had to um, then trim the the the, the lump a bit. I don't know. Hard ox man is difficult. Didn't cut the, I didn't film the part where I cut this off the end. Focus. 
but the idea is the back of this uh, nut is welded up and I cut it off and that's the other half on the other side going through you clean up both give them a bit of a roundiness to the edges not so roundy that you can't grab it with this otherwise a disaster and that way that's what I'm going to use to tighten that down to the base plate Hot, 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 hot. Where's the other part gone? Yo, 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 yo. Ah, there we go. There's my custom, custom nut and bolt. So what we have here is kind of a poverty la uh, poverty lathe mark II um, three jaw chuck like you get in a uh, real lathe and a spike down here although I might I might upgrade this uh, so we're going to give this a whirl and see how does the t having a proper three jaw, ch jaw chuck and having it not wobble as much make much of a difference So this guy was a lot faster, uh, it didn't rattle out, it held it more solidly than I'm used to. I'm not sure there was still, when you go in with the grinder as opposed to like the actual cutting tool on the lathe, the top here is still not perfectly, there wasn't an, a noticeable enhanced roundness or whatever. Um, it's cause, so even though this guy is spinning um, more centered than I usually have it. When you go in with the angle grinder I think it just adds up the mistakes you know and you wind up having more material chewed off on one side than the other. I think I think you can't really get around that when you're doing it this crappy way I'm doing it. Still though it only took I'd say that took very little time to do. But to remove a similar amount of material on a real lathe would be, I don't know, it depends on the size of your lathe, but I, I think I only spent like 10 minutes doing that maybe. It actually took the material off so fast, this bit up here, which was initially going to be this, had gotten a little bit too skinny. So I, to, I brought it down to get a bit here. I mean, oh, it's having difficulty. And now this, it gets these like lines on this part. But that's the little section I wanted here. Shkloop. across the back here two marks um, so I knew in theory what was the middle here but I wanted to draw a line all the way around so this pen is suspended 19 millimeters half of 38 off the um, it's on a slope so I could adjust it by uh, shoving a thing in the back here which made the pen at the top go shove the thing in the back there it goes down um, yeah, and so I could draw the line exactly in the middle all the way around.
Sanding the bottom so that it sits flat on a surface like I need them to. Um, it's much faster if you grind a little bit out of the middle. You don't have to grind much, ow! But just enough that, like, when you, you see, you can see the remains there that it wasn't that much. But just to scoop the middle out so that you're working in from the edges and that way it's, it's less work to get them actually flat so they're sitting on a surface. Uh, can I hold this without burning myself? Because both of these relatively big chunks are hot. I don't know, can you see, are they lying flat? But yeah, they're flat. Whereas before with the angle grinder, you know, doing your best, but you just they were wibbly wobbly on the surface. Hey, they look like those badminton things. Shuttlecocks. Shuttlecocks. That's a, that's a good word to say. This guy is taken down to two inches from the original. So we're two inches or a little bit shy on this side. And what did we start off as? We started off as 2.17. Is that two and an eighth? What's 0.17? Uh, it's probably an eighth. Three sixteenths? It's close to the three sixteenths. Um, so not much material taken off each side, which is probably why it makes somewhat sense now. This, um, you know, oh actually, hang on, point, 1.978, and if we turn it 90 degrees roughly we get 1.98. So however much of a difference that is, but that's not bad for the grinder. Yow! I wonder what the um, the wall thickness difference is. 2.1, 2.09, 2.17. Yeah, so it's not nowhere near as accurate as a real lathe would be, kind of thing. Now I have to, this part gets taken down to a slant, an angle. Not bad for a guy with no lathe. On the inside here, Remy, you can see the slight difference. It's like less than a millimeter though, between this side and this side. I need to just take another shave out of this. This is a big pipe that uh, with an eighth inch wall that I cut down to try and make a, a sleeve between these two to match the di diameters. It nearly is, it's nearly working. I can't touch it cause it's hot, should be still wearing my glove. There we go. I mean, it's not perfect, but what is? Ta-da! So what I'm doing here, this little collar piece, uh, that goes up, uh, up to the handle has this uh, etching on it like this that wraps around like here. Now normally I'd get Adam to print it out a thing but because I knew this was going to be so goddamn fiddly not the design, the design is actually quite simple but the uh, width of it and the the length of it because this, this turned on my lathe the way it was is a bit random and the diameter is known, but the relationship between the diameter and how wide to make the design, I just know there's going to be some dicking around to get it to work. So that's why I cut it out myself. And so we're going to try and transfer this around the outside of this guy. So I finally got it on and got the tape removed. 
but these little things they would not cooperate they wouldn't stick they came up with it because they're only the strip was only gripped on by these little triangles and it just wasn't enough so I had to go back and recut little squares and stick them on you can kind of see the other half of the little square there and go around the edge I think I'm going to get away with it though or rather I think it looks it'll look correct uh, but now is will this all survive getting burnt out it's actually quite a bit of material to remove I thought it was a small amount just because of the design but looking at it closer I'm like mm -hmm. so let's see does this work so here we have the negative uh, in the pool and then the red is connected to this guy everything else is matched up and hopefully this will work in the salty water And there we see the bubbles almost immediately. And now we just wait and see what happens. This is after 15 minutes. Hmm. I can see the little vinyl, the little, these little tiny bits are starting to fail. So let's wash her off, peel her off, and then see what we got. So that's a cleaned up a bit. I might gun pollute the design. It's not as deep as I'd like, but it's never as deep as I'd like. So, but I think that reads. I think you're able to tell. It's not mysterious what that's supposed to be. It gets a line etched in here too. Uh, well, not literally etched. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna file this line. Go to gun blue, maybe this, and then sand back. Make this stick out even more. So what I did was just put some gun blue in, increase the contrast a bit so you can see these guys a bit more. It's so cold out! I need a coat and a cup of tea! Man! Woo! I need to take a tidy slice out here. The piece I cut was slightly too big. And I can hammer it in and finish it off. It's a big ass mark here, but that line's there because that's where the that other little collar I made goes. This thing gets covered in leather anyway, so it wouldn't matter. But where's the on thing gone? Here. This thing goes here. So it's not like anyone would ever see. And then this guy goes. It's either this way or the other way. I think it's this way, except it's that's too hot for me to mess with. I 
I need to cut a big ass disc. Um, but when I was cleaning this piece of metal off, look at the back of it. I think this is a test piece. Yow! A test piece for doing the black sword. I couldn't see these letters at all. It was like totally rusted over. Because um, I probably didn't clean the salt off. I probably just went, oh yeah, that looks like it'll work. And then didn't clean it properly. And there was like this thick coat of stuff on top. So, but that it all came back when I cleaned it. So, now this plate, as I did, was aggressive with the grand sign, uh, sanders and grinders. It's a little bit hot. That black line is where it actually has to go. So this whole saw I had for doing the buster sword a billion years ago is actually nearly the right size for doing this. So I'll just have to shave off a little bit with the die grinder. So this is the past the piece in there. I don't know, can you see from the side? The way, hmm, focus, there we go. So this from the side, these guys plus the paper are the 9.7 millimeters or whatever it is to the, the lip. And so now I'm gonna just put a couple of like little tacks in without burning out the edge, hopefully, he said. And that will secure, I need a couple of good tacks to secure it and then the, the uh, depending on how melty the tacks look, that might be that might be it. That might be all it gets. And beside the, the side, they look a bit anemic. I'll weld it more. So you can see that there was a good amount of heat, but without any melting through. That little tiny lip, you know, this slopes down and then there's just the tiniest lip, um, I don't know, maybe a millimeter. Zap, 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 zap. Nice and hot. Which is, I mean, not a perfect indicator of there being a good join. But it's a good start. There was certainly never a good weld done cold. Now, can I get the piece of metal out from the inside, or would it be a disaster? Oh, 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 that's burning me good. 
Come on. Oh. Here we go. There we go. That was on the inside, flat across this, so I could clamp it down. But yeah, that would be the other thing. It would get awfully silly if for some reason I couldn't get it out after putting this on. So now I can weld this and be relatively sure that the plate won't. I might do I might do four more tacks at the midpoints that the plat, uh, plate will stay flat. Plat, that's what I was saying. Words, they are difficult. You can see the slightly different colour of the weld around the edge. But I like that I like that three dot chuck. It does a great job of conveying the illusion that the guy who made this knew what he was doing. So now I just want to talk about these things for a minute, because they were an absolute pain in the arse. There's these little decorations uh, that are on the guard. And uh, I have these these groovy side views and tops and downs views, but it's a side view of a of a um, curved surface, the round guard piece. So I could copy paste those, but then I had to do tricky math to translate the curved surface to the flat surface. See, like uh, so, which one was it? This one. Uh, so this side here, one, two, three, four, five, six segments is broken up into, and then. Using the numbers I got from printing out a uh, quarter circle and then noting the difference between the different parts So that's 30 mil and then when you measure this uh, down here, it's 105. I was so proud of myself using just the the vernier and Break having the vernier into walking it along at, at 10 minute mini, uh, 10 millimeter segments We got a total figure when you add up all these numbers together of uh, Where is it gone? 282.6 But when you do it by calculation like what should a uh, Circle what should the a quarter circumference of a circle of 360 diameter be you get 282.7 So I was off by 0.1 of a mil measuring it by hand uh, It's probably not that impressive like some of these are probably further off and uh, They just miraculously all the mistakes added up to being the right number but anyway, so then this side, where's the center line? There's the center line. One, two, three, four, five, six, but they get wider as they go out. Because that's a function of the looking down at the circle. Uh, it's obvious when you look at this picture. See how this last segment looking down and a side view of a circle, the last segment is long compared to like the first segment, which is only a tiny bit longer. Um, see that was that was 30 mil and it actually measures 30.1 mil and then oh, and the 30 mil is roughly 10 times the size it has to be in real life where is the layer so when you do the stretchy business you know that's the other half uh, is this one yeah so this is what you get so this is what it actually looks like hang on is it obvious what happened bloop may not look like much but this little stretch here made it so that when I went to add the top piece here and um, the two pieces actually um, not this one, not this one, this one yeah the two pieces actually matched up where's the match? here's the match here where I pasted them together and it makes one continuous thing that actually makes sense and then I could print that out and I could draw on top of it and then get something I could actually print out um, uh, that's roughly correct and then from that I carefully chopped out paper template this is the actual size one I kinda chopped out half the pieces on one side and the other half of the pieces on the other side because if you chopped out all of them on a single side um, the template would fall apart 
but then that meant I could trace, wrap, oh, come on, wrap and trace it onto the surface of the guard piece. So now I have an actual, oh, I hope I don't do my usual trick of dropping the piece of metal here. I'll crush my keyboard. So what, I, <coughs> so what I've done here is I'm worried I'm not going to be able to follow these lines um, once I start welding. So I've uh, physically marked them with the die grinder. It's not very deep, but that would that would survive severe um, steel wire brushing and all the other stuff I have to do. And uh, I, you know, a combination of this and referencing the actual paper template. Hopefully I'll be, I'll be able to follow. I was worried about um, if I just tried to follow the ink marks and the ink marks get burnt off, they could uh, vary wildly as I work my way around the edge, you know? But um, hopefully I'll be able to follow these guys. Have to clean it up. Whoa, it's so hot. There we go. And hopefully it's still actually round. That's why I welded these two guys on first, to because if I'd started welding it before, when this was just a pipe segment, it would have probably gone all wibbly wobbly. I think that's acceptable. Can't see because it's sitting under there. But like the, these parts I was messing around with on the poverty lathe thing, um, they're for the like the the, the rev in handle the, on the uh, sword. I'm not sure. Depending on how difficult it is and how unstable it makes it, I might make it so this handle actually squeezes with a spring. Um, but if that proves to make it too rattly and weak, because this is quite a heavy piece of bar. Um, then I might just just leave it be static but we'll see but anyway for now I'm welding it together I have it tacked into position I'll or I have it clamped into position I'm going to tack it so that it matches the template perfectly and then take it off there and weld it full on just a piece of metal because if you weld it on this not only will the template burn uh, but it, the smoke would interfere with the weld Now I can wet it all the way around, that it's locked into the correct angles. 
it's more or less just that this is straight, which is this, but the, there was a possibility that this distance could have moved a bit too. So that's that thing welded and welded and sanded back. Where's the focus point? But the thing I gotta do now, it's got these lines up it. I have to look at the template again, but I'm pretty sure it's six lines. It might be four. I'm gonna look at the template again. And they do an odd thing here. So I'm not sure whether I'm gonna grind them or etch them. So I've masked off uh, just the parts that I want to actually etch. I'm gonna see, can I do a reverse thing where I cover it in wax? Let's see, does that work? This is actually those wrappers that come off the cheese. They seem like a slightly fancier wax than um, just the cheap ass tea lights. I have, t what do you call them? The little tiny lights, t little tiny candles. They made of cheap nasty stuff. But the, the those little cheeses that my kids leave the wrappers for everywhere. It seems more like that fancy beeswax wax they get on the candles that are too expensive but it peels so nicely it's kind of soft, it's not brittle like the cheap wax but the hope is I'll be able to peel off these stickers the vinyl cutouts the strips without making too much of a mess so much like I was hoping the things peeled off correct but I are peeled off easy but I couldn't film that stage because I was worried about this, just maneuvering this guy was difficult and I wanted to do it before the wax got cold so I had to go 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 but yeah they just came off easily just stabbing them stabbing them with the exacto and then peel so hopefully this will work I've only ever tried this um, wax resist type stuff on very small pieces so I'm going to do it in two halves because I couldn't find anything actually I'm not going to connect that yet I couldn't find anything deep enough in my recycling uh, to do it all in one shot and um, it's a lot of material to remove so it might be better to do it in two two bits we got the old positive negative the level. I'm gonna let this go for 15 minutes, put it out and see what it looks like. There it goes. Can the camera see the bubbling? Kind of. Here's the other end. I wound up leaving them both in for 40 minutes. The wax, I think it's because it was a very thick layer I put on, um, seemed to last quite well. Hang on, I don't want to get this all over the floor. I was doing this two-handed when I was doing this before. Not wax over the floor, the, the black drippy stuff. The salt water. It's very stainy because of all the black. It's probably not great to be washing this down your drain. See it coming off? Hmm. Cleaning this wax off might involve a lot of um, stuff. Be more complicated than cleaning, just peeling off the vinyl. So, my call it a night now, seeing as each one of those, each half of this thing took 40 minutes. It's quite late now. So, that's it cleaned up. You can see the lines on it. Whoa! God damn it! I WD 40'd it, I gun blued it, and sanded it. Ah! Gun blued it, sanded it. And now, trying to hold it up like this so you guys can see it. It's still slippy. I could probably do it wiping some of the WD-40 off. Someone asked before, why didn't I um, gun blue things while the resist is still on? But this, there's so much salt and stuff in the etch that you really have to um, clean it out. Ah, this is stuck to the towel. You really have to clean it out thoroughly before you attach the gun blue because it would be too dirty on the inside for the gun blue to work. 
Can you see it? This part where, where you can see the weld, the actual weld is visible inside the etch because it etched differently to the base metal. So this is yarn piece. I had to uh, take a kind of a piece out of the inside here because there was a bit of confusion with the template. Just the way this was drawn, it was like an awfully thin piece coming out. So I didn't want to actually make that piece out of it, an awfully thin piece. So instead I made it out of a thick piece and just kind of dog ground a piece out so the arm could extend out to where it needs to be. Also this template, the way this, this transition between this and this was drawn was kind of confusing. It might have because the original was on a much thicker, uh, made of a much thicker piece of steel or something. Not steel, uh, whatever, computer graphics. Um, and since this is made out of thinner stuff, it's, um, it just doesn't, it doesn't meet this guy in the same way as drawn. There's a little bit here, like it goes under and joins here. But that doesn't make any sense when you take into account the thicknesses of the relevant pieces. So we want to do it this way. There's some lines. There's some lines to do on this guy, etching wise. I'm not sure what to do about the pin here. Because I could put something in, weld over it, and have it be permanent. But I'd be worried about maintenance in the future. So I might just do a pin. Like a, like a piece of quarter inch bar and then just pound it flat or pound it, mushroom it on one end and then mushroom it on the other end so that way if somebody has to do maintenance on it in the future they have half a chance of being able to fix it, you know you need to get a big ass spring so this is the piece masked off it looks like a very interesting shape with all of the things gone but that's the strip I want to burn I was actually worried about how I was going to earth it, but then this this works out fine. I just won't fill up to the level of the um, contact. And then hopefully when I connect this black one, we'll see some bubbles. Oh, maybe not. This is, This contact might need to get cleaned. So it wasn't so much the contact as what I was using I was using a galvanized nail, didn't seem to like it. I found some copper things and it's bubbling away now, so hopefully that will work. That didn't come down, uh, <coughs> that didn't come down anywhere near. It wandered something off it as I was trying to drill. But it's okay, because uh, that hole, I have to make that hole much wider anyway. I took that piece out of the uh, jaw horse, turned it over to get the 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 piece of the pipe piece out of it, 
and all the die grinder swath fell out. So I have to very carefully get rid of this because if I clench my hand it's going to be a bad time. All of these little splinters are razor sharp. Still don't trust it. I think they've got most of it. I'm gonna blow my hand off with the air before I try making a fist. tacked into place. Now I'm going to stare at this and torture myself until I decide it's in the correct place or not. Then I'm going to weld it up fully. I can't remember, I never showed the etching on this guy, but you, I mean you can see it. Okay, it looks like it's focused. So that's the handle the things. Oh, how do I show it? The thing I was worried about was the the handles lined up like looking parallel and the spring being powerful enough to power this type of thing I think that worked you can see the spring inside there oh, God damn it. there we go see the spring oh come on touch screen technology does not respond to really cold hands This is incredibly stupid and probably not worth the effort. Here, I'll buzz it before I do the stupid thing. Here. Even out the edge, it needs more on this surface though. So that's that guy cleaned up. You can see some wibbly wobbliness from the weld, but I prefer to leave it wibbly wobbly than grind more. And because th this surface is difficult to clean properly because of the way the two things meet. It would have been easier to bevel this before uh, putting it up through here. But I wanted a, a sharp edge on this guy so I could go around at various points and make sure it was at the same distance all the way around. Uh, because these parts met in my lathe, there was no. Yeah, it's just, it's just hard to center it, you know? Like this thing is round, kinda, <laughs> you know? Uh, but yeah, so that, that's where we're ready to start sticking all the handle parts together.
This is welded around here. And it's welded around here too. I might weld this guy in now. And the next step, cleaning this up, I have to do something silly with the drill and the three jaw chuck. So I'll get the camera set up. I'll weld this guy and then get the camera set up because that could end in horror. So what I've done is I welded this guy on, uh, obviously, but I've welded these two collars on too because this crazy setup I have here, I realized I wanted to do this the least number of times. There's a cut here and screws here so I can unscrew this and have this half and half because that's very dumb. But I can clean up all the wells when it's in this contraption. So I attacked these guys with sandpaper and scotch bright and the rest. Focusing properly. That's the idea. This one is welded in here. That guy's welded there, obviously. And that one's welded here, which is now cleaned up. I'm gonna to have to clean up the this part where it was grabbed onto the chuck with just the uh, sandpaper and files. Maybe you can see the yellow of the heat from the weld versus the silver of the polished back part. Oy. Yeah, the bottom of this is kind of polished back because of the. All the rubbing off the wood. Oh yeah, and that's the bottom of it. See, that's where the weld was. I was driving myself insane just there as I lifted it out of the thing. It looked to me like this was cockeyed. Like that this was tilted back. So, flat piece of hard ox, two pieces of square stock the same, and pushed it up. And, yeah, there's, it's, it's fine. But it just, there's, my eye is detecting something that isn't actually there and I'm not sure what. Maybe it's just because I'm tired. Do you want to say hello to the cat? Say hello to that little cat. Look, the cat said hello to you with his hissing face. <coughs> You're sniffing his bum. You're sniffing that cat bum. Yes, you are. Sniffing that cat bum. Did it smell good? You gonna follow that cat? I'm not sure the cat wants to have adventures with you. <laughs> Does that cat want to have adventures? Amelia, can you see out the window? I'd leave that cat alone if I was you. So what I'm doing here is I printed out yet another copy of the template for lining up the handle and the god damn my finger's still stiff. The handle and the blade. The there's a long straight piece here, and the handle is obviously parallel to that, but that's all the way up here. And the handle's down there, so it's kind of difficult to unless I had a huge big long thing. Um but using the back of this guy, this edge, and the ruler square, Woo! Ah! I could line the template up with the table, you know. So, and then hopefully I'll be able to, because everything has to be suspended because of the big round piece here. Um, hopefully I'll be able to line everything up with the edges that they're supposed to be lined up with until that way is everything where it's supposed to go. 
So this is the part that always drives me crazy. We're using this guy along the edge to line it up with that line. I don't know, it's hard to see the line with the camera, but there's a line drawn on the trace from the template down below. Here I had to shrink it a little bit because it was, this guy's only 33 millimeters and I think the template accounted for the leather, it was a bit wider, like 36 or something. But lining it up that way, also giving it the old eyeball test to see does the that straight bit all the way here does it look like it's lined up with the handle and you could drive yourself insane deciding whether or not that's actually the case getting up high to look at it to go to decide whether or not that actually looks like it's lined up oh the stabilizer in my camera is moving while I'm trying to move hold still there you go but I think that's as good as I'm going to get torture wise little spacers under here the only thing you'd have to contend with round handle is is that little square piece here half and half on this um, that's another thing that's hard to tell other than just kind of squinting at it but I think that's what I'm going to go for everything's clamped ready to go across Okay. I wonder, this one is weirdly offset. What's it like to actually hold as a sword? Is it too hot? No. A lot of material to absorb the heat in this guy. Is it straight? <laughs> yep. It's not too bad. Nearly there. This is a test of the microphone on the camera. Yet another test for safety to see is there something um, strange going on with the microphone or something. I blew out the camera but I'm not even sure which hole is the microphone. Oh, 
unfortunately, I had to take off quite a bit more than I, I thought I should have. It's a little bit odd, but that's what I had to do to fit it in there. So I didn't quite look the w like the way that that uh, weird cutout was, so I welded in some material, and now so this this groove doesn't go all the way up; it stops, and so there's extra material in there. So the transition. Careful, this is too hot to hold here. Not quite. So the ow, maybe it is. Oh my god! Come on, glove. Right, I guess I can do it without holding the glove. The transition looks more like that than what it looked like before so I think that's more acceptable than what it was previously it's just it's a, it's a very odd transition you know between the, the bar which is a rounded back and the cone cone surface So what I've done here is I've taken a little bit out of the back, grown a bevel on the back here so I can slide these in and put them directly up against without having to do any sort of grinding on this weld because that's a very small weld. It's a small weld but it's a long weld so hopefully that will be strong enough to hold it on and it's got a couple of other things holding it on like there's this bit at the back and there's this stud going through here and there'll be the stuff going around here holding it on. But for these guys, um, yeah, so I ground out the bevels on the back so I can slide them in and put them up directly without, um, without touching the weld on this guy. And then, so similar to this guy, but it's gonna be trickier. So the idea is it's a small, delicate weld in here that doesn't disturb the surface. And so the back of this guy, back of this guy is ground similar. So it should, in theory, if everything went fine, click. And I weld, weld the back here. In order to reach in, I had to extend the needle out way too long. If I wasn't welded into a space that was gathering the argon coming out of there, it was it would um my guess is it wouldn't have worked. But I had to balance it, I had to balance the needle such that it wasn't um touching off either side, it was tricky. But that's that's all of them joined on now. Just have to clean up this guy. Disaster! I was putting in some extra weld. And it leaked through. This was the weld on the like the opposite of this is the appointment that won't burn me. The opposite of this weld on this side that you can't see, it bled through. Blah, blah, blah. 
So I'm going to have to, man, it's going to be pain in the ass cleaning that up. I'll check back in. Yeah, I'm not going to film me doing it. There's going to be lots of grinding and sanding and filing. Uh, yeah, I'll turn the camera back on when I've taken care of it. You can kind of see it there. The a pointy thing. There's a patch, slightly patch, a patch of different coloured stuff. That's the remains of I, I welded into the hole and I ground back. Whew! It was a fairly nerve-wracking repair job. But, um, I think it's acceptable. That's all of the vents welded on. So gotta clean up. What does the other side look like? Yeah, so hopefully that will be easier to clean up than the side that had the hole blasted through it. There we go. Oh, at least knowing that there's a hole blasted through it. Um, lets you know that it was a strongish weld. That would be the other thing, is if all these little delicate welds that we're doing weren't actually strong enough. They probably aren't that strong, but the fact that a lot of them uh, were welded in different places. You know, like two crappy welds, or two tack welds done as a thing takes a corner, zap zap, is like infinitely stronger than like if it was just on a flat. Because, you know, something could grab and tear up. Oh man, just want to say a big thank you to Caleb Zabinus Air Tool. I was totally skeptical because the only other time I used one of these, it was one, uh, it just had really crappy torque. But this one has just, like, it has enough oomph to do this. Like the previous ones I had experience with would just stop if you did anything as aggressive as die grind with them. Uh, but this one. Its torque is definitely comparable to like the electric die grinder, which is amazing because I only have a crappy compressor. <laughs> I was looking at the template and uh, I just noticed, I think I knew this a long while ago but then forgot it, that the back here, this bit is sharp too. Now I'm not sure about putting a full full edge on here because that will weaken this tip I think too much because this is very pointy but I'll do a bit of a something. I might bring it down not the full eighth inch but just just a bit that I can get the look of the thing on here. There we go. Oh, <laughs> that was the the little screen on the side. I was checking the view for the little flip out screen on my camera, and it wasn't folded out all the way, and it tipped, and it made it look like the sword was falling off the table because I was looking at it at the right time. But see, I didn't do a full. How do I move this? I didn't do a full sharp. There's two millimeters down the back. Because I was just concerned about oh, I was concerned about this tip, but it looks right, you know. I didn't film this, but I should have. Um, I mean, it's not much. I just, I hammered the pin, which was a bit of a balancing act because I had to get a piece of metal underneath. I, I could hammer one side of it before putting it together and then get a piece of metal underneath the already hammered side and then hammer the other side. But I didn't want any actual, I wanted all the force to transfer through the pin because I'd be nervous about like, this is, 
relatively sturdy, but I don't want to hammer on this surface because this is like a hollow box. Uh, like if, if the blow was strong enough, it could deform the side of this box and put a big huge dent in it. So it was tricky, but I got it in there. So if you needed to get this out, you would very gently grind the surface of this and then tap it out with a hammer. But nobody will have to do that, he said, hopefully. Now, in this we are finding out, can you apply Duracoat with a paintbrush? This section of the sword is in a no impact zone. So I might switch to regular paint. Like just Rustodium. I think that might be better. I suppose this type of paint is designed to not interfere with the working of a gun. Which would explain why it was so thin. It's not for painting a gate or whatever. I'm going to experiment with this and check back in when I'm actually done. So that is just regular Rust-Oleum. Uh, the the Duracoat just wasn't working. And like I was saying before, the this area would be a nightmare to mask off. I'm, I'm sure somebody will write me an email about some fantastic thing I could have painted on the surface and then rubbed off with my finger afterwards, but I, I don't have that. So that's just Rust-Oleum. Because this is buried in this nook, I don't think it's going to be much of an issue. Like, this is not, this is so far from what should be an impact surface. Um, I think I'll be fine. Some shadows. I should wait till daylight to do this. I didn't film this uh, because doing it was very tricky. And, um, but I gun blew this guy with the paintbrush. I just freehand seemed to do it. Rinsed off and stuff in time. That was the tricky part. I went outside and my water bucket was frozen. But that's this this section here got gun blued. And I'm just kind of trying to carefully sand. I had it taped off, but the the tape wasn't uh, quite waterproof enough for the job. It started to seep through. Uh, I can't see. I suspect there's a leakage here, but because of the angle. No, that's not helpful because of the color of the light. I can't see. This light is too blue. This is an LED as well. Nope, I still can't see. I think there's a thing here. I'll probably, in natural light tomorrow, it'll probably look garbage, but I think, I think that's okay. The camera did not cooperate with me, but uh, I'm using this stuff called leather cement, uh, leather craft cement, and it seems to be working better than the contact cement or the double-sided tape. I mean, I guess the proof will be the pudding in the... It's late. There'll be a more definitive test when I actually swing it around, but for the moment, just casually, it seems to be better than the all the other stuff I've tried. It was easier to apply. It actually stuck the leather. I didn't have to fight with it. The parts were dribbled over. I could clean up better. The contact cement, I find fairly nightmarish to try and deal with. That's why I've been experimenting with the double-sided duct tape and stuff. And the double-sided duct tape works, but um, this seems more refreshing now to use a type of glue or whatever in my eternal bid to find something strong enough to bond leather and steel. Can I flip this guy over gently? Will that help? <laughs> Glue on the surface it practically rubs off the steel. But like, the second I put it on, it actually stuck. Whereas the contact cement, it slides and stuff. So, but like I said, the proof won't be, I won't know till I swing it. I guess I won't swing it till tomorrow. Get a nice shot of it sinking into the stump. God, the snow, it makes everything look darker than it actually is. But that's her done. Whew. 
I'll get Anthony to film me smashing stuff with it in a while. But for the moment, here's a nice, cool, dramatic shot of it sitting in a snowy stump. This one took so long. Maddie! Maddie! Making giant swords, it makes puppies bigger, doesn't it? How big are you now? You're as big as a house. Now I gotta get her inside and WD 40'd before the wetness from the snow undoes all of my work. <laughs> 